Talk to me about Fixed Flow. Fixed Flow is my baby, and I love Fixed Flow. Okay. And Fixed Flow came out of uh, a very painful situation where my roof kept leaking as a tenant, and all my clothes went mouldy, and the landlady kept spending money to fix the wrong bit of the roof and didn't really get it right. And um, do I mention my clothes went mouldy? My shoes went mouldy. My everything went mouldy. And at the same time, so I was living over in New Zealand. Okay. <laughs> New Zealand, where at? I was living in Auckland. Oh, so, um, nice part world. It's beautiful, nicest place I've ever lived. Um, and I got rugby world cup tickets, so. I'm gonna move I was there at the time. Were you? Yeah, in 2011. Oh no, sorry, I was in Australia when it was in 2003. Uh, yeah, well. So, um, I was working as a lawyer in London. I'm a, this is all reverse chronology, but I hope that's okay. So, no idea what happened. <laughs> so, working as a lawyer in London, I got Rugby World Cup tickets. Um, couldn't get time off work, so called up the law firm that was sponsoring the World Cup and asked for a job over there, and they very kindly gave me a job. Moved over to New Zealand and rented out my place in London, so I was a landlord. At the same time, I was renting in New Zealand, and they have lots of homes that were built with untreated timber, which means that in a subtropical climate, it rains. When it rains, the wood expands. When the wood expands, it rains indoors and stuff goes mouldy. So that's why my clothes were going to be mouldy. Anyway, so my tenants in London were calling me at uh, ungodly hours. I'll describe it as because of the time difference with things they ought to have been fixing themselves and I just thought this doesn't work very well for anybody. At the same time my house was raining indoors which doesn't work for tenants and I just thought there's a whole problem here around repairs. Okay. I'm not too sure what it is um, but I'd love to try and solve it. Okay. Uh, because I've got a sort of cut to the chase then what did you do? What did I do? I uh, presumed I knew nothing, came back to England, wanted to start solving the problem and I, I'm not... And how did you do that then? Um, I spoke to lots and lots and lots of people. So I walked the streets, going into letting agencies, asking for five minutes of their time to better understand what their problems were with how repairs were being dealt with. And we didn't have any tech at the time, so it was just me and a clipboard and shoes. And a PowerPoint presentation? Not that, not at that point, so it just started with what are your problems? Mm -hmm. So not trying to design a solution without knowing what the problem is. I then Interesting that you actually went out there and spoke to agents as opposed to building it and then trying to sell it. Yeah. I think that's the only way you can really solve someone's problem is if you understand what their problem is. Um, so uh, some of them have actually turned into clients, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they also feel, they, they should feel, and they do feel part of what was built. Um, I then built a PowerPoint presentation because I'm not technical. Okay. And did that lots of bullet points on it. It was like, horrendous. Oh. And it, was, it had lots of transitions as well because I quite like this. It's spinning in and out. Um, <laughs> death by PowerPoint. Death by PowerPoint. And I was like, well, is this a bit closer? And they're like, yeah, not, not really. Um, and then uh, refined the PowerPoint and got to the stage of doing uh, what's called interactive wireframes, which is non technical person, drag, drop put the name on the button, click on this button, it opens another page, you don't need any coding ability. And then people wanted to buy that. And only when people wanted to buy it did we start building. 